everyone. Uh, I am Sudipta. I am a postdoc at Stanford University, and today I am going to talk on proximity induced moiety exciton in a transition metal dichalcogenide monolayer. So this work has been done in pro uh, collaboration with Professor Felipe Jornada. So today I will start by discussing some of these terms like moiety exciton and the transition metal dichalcogenide monolayer. So this transition metal dichalcogenide has been briefly induced, uh, introduced by my by the speaker before me. So here I am showing a bulk structure of transition metal dichalcogenide, also known as TMDs. So here these violet uh, circles represents the metal atom, which can be molybdenum or tungsten. And the yellow circles are the chalcogen, which can, which can be sulfur, selenium, or tellurium. And we can com combine one of these metal atoms with two chalcogens in this MX2 format to get these TMDs. So TMD has a layer structure and each of these layers are weakly bound. So one can mechanically exfoliate it and get a monolayer of it. So in this monolayer TMD, there are electrons and those electrons we can think of like occupying till a certain energy level. So schematically we are showing here, these red dots represent the electron which are occupying till this energy level. And then there are higher energy level which are empty. And this is the energy gap. So here the electrons are in equilibrium and now we sign light on it. So this electron gets excited and move to the higher energy level and it leaves an empty space behind. The empty space is called hole and this electron and the hole uh, are bound by inter, are bound by a Coulomb interaction and they form, an ex, they form an exciton. As discussed by my colleague before, these excitons are responsible for absorption in material and TMDs are a phenomenal material in this aspect because they can absorb 15% of sunlight so here I am showing a representative absorption spectrum of TMD computed theoretically and observed experimentally. So this was a brief introduction to TMD and exciton. Now we'll discuss, we'll introduce moire. To create a moire, we take such a monolayer material and top of it, we put another material. So, so we have two layers and then we rotate the top layer with respect to the bottom layer. So we see this nice periodic, this longer periodic pattern emerges. So this is the moire pattern. And if we look closely, we see the configuration varies from here to here to here. So because of this varying configuration, uh, moire potential originates in the system. And these moire potentials uh, have been in recent research because they can hold uh, strongly correlated electronic and excitonic phases. So today we'll talk about moire excitons. So moire, this moire pattern host different kinds of long-lived and localized exciton. For example, in this MOAC2, WAC2 heterostructure, the interlayer exciton becomes brighter as the twist angle becomes smaller. So why this is important? So in interlayer exciton, the electron and the hole resides in two different layer of the heterostructure. So these excitons are long lived, which is good for application, but they are often dark. But here in this moiety pattern, we see like as this twist angle becomes smaller, the exciton becomes brighter. So that becomes experimentally accessible. Uh, there is one, another type of exciton which we call intralayer exciton. In this exciton, both the electron and the hole are in the same layer and they are often tightly bound and they can be optically very bright, but the problem is they are very short lived. So in WS2, WS2 moire, another type of exciton has been discovered, another type of intralayer exciton has been discovered where the electron, uh, where the hole and the electron are specially separated. So they become longer lived. So, and it is again good for experiment or application. So here we see that by the moire pattern, we can tune the exciton properties as desired, but this moire potential is material dependent and static. So the question we ask here is, can we induce a moire potential externally in a TMD layer and how will it influence the excitons in that layer? So to, to induce a potential externally, we need another material which exhibits a long range potential. So uh, twisted HBN is perfect for this. So here I am showing a 1.4 degree twisted HBN. This is a moire pattern of HBN. And uh, he, here if we look closely, we see again like this local atomic configuration varies continuously. Like here we identify three, uh, three stackings which are energetically more stable. So I am describing the stacking here. So first I am showing the A stacking in which the boron and nitrogen of the top layer are aligned with the boron and nitrogen of the bottom layer. So this structure has mirror symmetry. So the dipole moment is zero in this structure. Now we slide the top layer with respect to the bottom layer such that the 
of the top layer is aligned with the nitrogen of the bottom layer. So this is the AB stacking and this is a low energy stacking. So in this stacking there is dipole moment along the positive Z direction. And if we further slide the top layer from here uh, such that the nitrogen of the top layer is aligned with the boron of the bottom layer, we have the BS stacking. It is just opposite of the AB stacking and it has a dipole moment along the negative Z direction. So in this moiety pattern, these uh, local stackings are varying continuously and as a result, the dipole moment is also varying and this dipole moment gives rise to a super, uh, to a polarization potential. And as the dipole, dipole moment uh, is varying in the supercell, we have this varying polarization potential which we are quantifying here. So here these big red and the blue triangles are because of the positive and the negative dipole moment respectively and the white portion represents zero dipole moment region. So now uh, this is a electrostatic potential, so this is a long range potential and if we put a TMD layer on top of it, this TMD layer is going to experience this specially varying potential. So by this we induce a moire potential externally in this TMD layer. But we also realize here that this commensurate heterostructure consisting of this MOS2 layer and this twisted HBN will contain thousands of atoms. So starting excitons in this system will be computationally intractable. So here we do some uh, physically motivated approximation. So first we say, notice here that this red and blue triangle, the AB and the BA domain are large compared to the transition region, the white region, uh, uh, which is known as the domain wall. So if we uh, plot the potential diagonally starting from origin to here, to here we see this one dimensional varying potential and we restrict ourselves from BA to AB region. So we are in this potential region. Now in experiment, these domains, domain sizes of the AB and the BA stacking can be arbitrarily large, like tens of nanometer, where the typical exciton radius are on the order of one nanometer. So for an exciton, this potential can be approximated as continuous along the direction perpendicular to the green, green line and varying along the green line. So we have this one dimensional potential and make it periodically continuous, we take a mirror's image of it. So we have this potential like this in the XY plane. So by this we approximate the two dimensional moire potential as a one dimensional effective uh, potential for the exciton. Now we are going to apply this potential to our TMD layer and study excitons in this system. To study exciton, uh, uh, we solve this Bethe-Solpeter equation as implemented in the Berkeley GW package. So the first term represents the mean field energy of the electron and the hole. The second term is the electron hole interaction and the right hand side gives me the energy of the exciton and the exciton wave functions. So the computation of these excitons involves several steps as illustrated here. So first we solve the mean field uh, Newtonian. Then we compute the dielectric screening, then the electron hole interaction, and finally we diagonalize the BSC Hamiltonian matrix. So some of these steps are computationally a bit expensive, like it involves multiple uh, diagonalization of matrix sizes of uh, 200,000. So these computations were initially done on Cori and then on Palmatter. So here I am showing the first, here I am showing the electronic structure of the TMD layer in presence of this potential. So our TMD layer is a one dimensional supercell consisting of 56 unit cell. So here I am showing the band structure. So this is the highest occupied energy level, which is known as the valence band maxima. And this is the lowest empty energy level, which is the conduction band minima. And here I am showing the wave function uh, corresponding to these two points, the VBM and the CBM. So the VBM is localized at the potential hill, and the CBM is localized at the potential oil. <coughs> Now we'll study exciton in this system. So before we present our atomistic details of these uh, excitonic uh, results, let us see what kind of excitons are expected in this system. So in the first case, we can have the hole to be localized at the potential hill and the electron to be localized at the potential well. So this, in this case, the exciton is, the electron and the hole of the exciton are spatially separated. So they are bound by weak interaction and we can have this charge separated exciton. In another case, both the electron and the hole can be on top of each other and they are tightly bound. So we can have one year exciton. 
So these two excitons have different spatial character, and because of that, we can tune their relative energy by changing the dielectric environment. So in our heterostructure, we have this TMD, and below that we have this HBN stack. So in this system, the one-year type exciton is the lowest energy exciton, and the charge-separated exciton is higher in energy by 240 millev. But now, if we put another HBN on top of the ETMD such that the TMD is encapsulated by HBN on both sides, the charge-separated exciton becomes the lower, lowest energy exciton. And now, and then, if we further test the top HBN by another higher dielectric material, such as uh, another TMD like WSE2, the charge-separated exciton further lowers its energy. So by changing the dielectric environment, we can tune between these two type of exciton. Uh, now, uh, let us look at some of these excitonic wave functions. So first I am showing the uh, energy exciton for the MDHBN heterostructure. So here I am plotting the electron amplitude as I fix the hole position. So the red dot represents the hole and the cloud is the electron amplitude. So when the hole is at the uh, so corner of the supercell, the, the small electron amplitude, but as the hole is in the domain region, large electron amplitude and the electron and hole are tightly, locked, tightly bound. So this is a one-year type exciton localized in the domain boundary. And as the potential, as the hole is moved to the potential hill, the electron amplitude reduces again. So uh, to stress again, this is a one-year type exciton which gets localized in the domain boundary region. Now we look at the uh, lowest energy exciton for the other case where the TMD is encapsulated by HBN on the both side. So here, when the hole is at the corner of the supercell, there is no electron and so on. But when the electron, sorry, when the hole is reaching the domain wall, uh, we have the electron uh, showing up here. And uh, when the uh, hole goes towards the potential hill, the electron and the hole get separated. So we have this charge separated exciton here. So as a conclusion, we induce an moiety potential externally in the TMD layer, which also allows us to dynamically tune between these two types of exciton. So our work fits well in the recent effort to uh, confine exciton. For example, in this experiment, uh, uh, there has been uh, this one-year exciton has been confined in the PN junction by gate-defined electric field. Charge transfer exciton has been observed in different type of moiety system, but in our method, we can engineer such quantum states with dynamical uh, overlap, which can be useful for application in quantum and photonic devices. For development, we devise a method to uh, include the proximity in, uh, induced super lattice potential in a target layer, layer in an ab initio way. This approximation let us uh, do these computations because otherwise these computations are uh, uh, immensely expensive. Uh, we are also performing more confused computation, that means like larger metric size, sizes, but thanks to NARS we can do this. And next we plan to investigate the influence of domain sizes in determining the exciton properties. Finally, I would like to thank Professor Marcos Menenges, uh, Dr. Mit Naik, and my colleagues from Jornada Group for all the helpful discussions. I definitely thank NARS for all the computational resources and Department of Energy for the funding support. Thank you. Here. Um, this is, I guess, more experimental, but when you say mechanical separation, is that like the scotch tape they did with graphene? Mechanical expulsion, yeah. 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 Similar to that, yeah. Okay.